Good evening. Wow. And welcome to the Tony Hammer Show. Yes. On the Live on this Wednesday yes. afternoon, morning, or evening, depending on where you're joining us from. My name is Tim, and on my side, next to me, it's Brother Hammer. Good morning. Yes, man. How are you? Yes, I'm good. How about you? I'm doing great. Who's the Just guest on the Tony Hammer Show today? Well, I think it should be, I've kind of forgotten the name, who was it? Okay. Some, <laughs> some, some, some crazy weird guy. Some, some, crazy some, weird guy. <laughs> yeah, I think that was the name. <laughs> anyway, if this is your first time joining us here on Adobe Live, then do come on over to Behance. We're watching the chat over there. I will post the link. Well, actually, I can show it. Hang on. No way. Yeah. Yes. Oh, that's like magic. That's how good I am. I can you are good, it. man. You really are good. Right. Mate, and, um, links appear at will. <laughs> Hang on. I can, I can make them disappear. Hang on. Do it again. Oh. Power of thought. Whoa. See this, everybody. This is value. <laughs> I think we're off to a great start. Um, yes. Let me say hi to some people in the chat, and then we will get going with the animate getting started stream with you so yeah. let's have a look at chat in there we have hang on let me open that caroline and doris and gilana and jack hi jack and jane and kirsty and mustafa and oliver and sandrine and sean and stefan and tim oh that's that's all yeah i keep seeing that name on there who is that no idea tim should open a church yes where we will talk about the Gospels of Adobe Live. Yes. The wonders and miracles of the uh, magic wand tool in Photoshop. And yep. of course... Let's sing... Sorry? I was going to say, let's sing hymn number 108, Stapler Accident Finger, yeah. <laughs> I don't think we will get any work done today. We will. We're going to get loads done. If I was Pinocchio right now, my nose would be on the webcam. <laughs> and it's Thou four shalt feet away. name your layers. Yeah, there we go. Thanks, Sandrine. Yeah. And don't forget to yes. save. Anyway, yes. um, Tony, let, let us know. Let the people at home who are watching, let them know what, uh, what are we doing today? So, when we... In, in our film club that we did, the most recent film club that we did with the Archer style titles for Adobe Live. Yeah. Uh, we used animate in part of that. I put, I did a couple of things, some frame by frame uh, animation in there, and people uh, became very animate curious. Uh, and so when we had a gap show up unexpectedly, uh, said, let's do an animate session. So we did. So say, and here we are doing an animate session. So it's really. It's just getting started in Animate. So we're going to do a couple of things. Well, one or one or two things. Um, very straightforward, but they'll give you an introduction to some of the essential tools and we'll make something. If you want to work along with me, you know, if you've got a spare screen that you can watch me on and then you can work along, go ahead and work along. It's not going to be fast paced. It's still going to be fun, I hope. Yeah, but we're going to make some stuff and get we'll some. We'll make it fun. We'll make it fun. Yes, even if it we means will. that I have to pull out all these sound effects, I will do that. All of them. Flugelhorn, go. There you are. See? Tim is the first man, first person in the world to daisy chain stream text. <laughs> he's, got, he's got 128 buttons across four stream decks. <laughs> Not true, but okay. The epic if it was. Anyway, moving on. Right. Right then. So, shall we get started? Yes. Let's do that. 
going over to your cool. screen, we are in Animate. Right yes. Now. The latest version, we I hope. Are. It is the latest version. Very Should good. be up to date. Made me think now. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> yeah, no, it's up to date. All right. So, 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 uh, I've been working with this tool uh, in all of its, actually all of its incarnations, right the way back to the beginning in 1995, when it was Future Splash Animator by Wave Technologies, uh, and then through into Macromedia Land, and then oh, yeah. eventually to Adobe Land. I remember that time, back in the day. You weren't born then, were you? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> you didn't even exist. You were, and even if you were born in 1995, you're about three or four days off of being, <laughs> <laughs> off of being there, I think, something like that. Anyway, right? Yes, 1995. I'm just trying to do the. If you, yeah. Anyway, right. Moving on. Right. So I've worked in it a long time. Uh, it's changed a lot, uh, especially recently. It does a lot more, but a lot more people use it for for uh, TV style animation, ep epic web animations, games, and all sorts of different things. But we are going to uh, just go ahead and do an animation. So I'm just thinking which preset to choose. There are so many to choose from, and they're all like task focused. So character animation here. We've got social, make a game, education. Uh, you need to be do a bit of a Cody stuff to do that ads general web and then advanced where you can pick you know and, and plug in all different sorts of different things but i think what we'll do is we'll go for character animation and i think we can uh, is a bit teeny winny so let's go to we'll go to 720p for that we'll keep it nice and simple and so our document opens uh let's have a quick tour of what we've got here so we've got the toolbar on the left-hand side, and then at the top here we've got the info bar, which has a few things inside of it. On the right-hand side, we've got arrays of panels in the layout I'm currently using, which happens to be uh, essentials uh, here, just to double check. And then across the bottom, we've got the all-important timeline and the super annoying sometimes output panel. There we go. <laughs> so yes, that's where we at. Well, the output panel is my favorite panel, of course. Is it really? No. It is useful if you're debugging something. So what happens is, just so you know, people's, and you'll probably see it later on, um, when I do something using HTML5 Canvas, which is one of the things it can do. So we've got a project that we're going to work through nice and steady. Uh, and if we get that finished in time, I'm going to show you another reason why you might, con if you use InDesign, why you might consider having a bit of a play in animate and you know if you just animate curious why you actually might actually dive into it and so what the output panel tells us is if things are wrong and if you're using html5 canvas which uses javascript that's a zero based index and so this will open up and just say oh, flash uses one as its first number mm. and so it has to to move that around because flash is not but flash i said flash it's, it's because it's a throwback to flash animate uses a a thing every time i say the f word the one i just said not the other f word <laughs> every time i say the f word tim i want you to make a tick and i think i'll donate 100 pounds to uh to the disaster emergency committee uh, ukraine appeal i think just because i've got to stop saying that it's very hard after such a long time right okay so let's have a look at some tools in here we've got some shapes we'll throw some shapes first just so we can uh, just familiarize ourselves with a couple of things i'm going to start with a rectangle just here now you'll notice there are two forms of rectangle i will show you both okay but here's a rectangle like so you click and drag and draw a rectangle like that now what i should have done before i did that in fact i'm going to just wind that back a second and I'm just going to create a fill color here. So we'll just make it nice and easy to see. Something like that. And also stapler accident finger lives here in uh, Animate as well. Tim, mm -hmm. can you see it? There's stapler yes. accident finger. You know, super good. It's there, probably there first. Okay, so I'm going to click and drag like that to create the rectangle. Now you can see it. Now, when you draw this sort of object in Flash, Unlike in Illustrator, the two parts are not connected. 
Okay, so if I tap V to get my selection tool and click on the fill, okay, it will generate me a fill like so. I've just realized I'm in object mode, so that's going to change in just a second. Okay, let me just delete that one just there. That was clever to do that. Let's just go ahead and just draw normal. It should be drawing me. I should not be in object mode. Da, 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 da. Let me just check. If not, I can break it apart. There we go. We'll try again. No, it's still in object mode, I think. So I'm going to break that apart. Right, okay. When you draw normally, not in object mode, this is what you get. Can you see this sort of dotty pattern all over that? If I zoom in, yes, you'll yes, see sir. it. And I'll zoom in just up to the top corner just there. So that fill, if I move it like so, is not actually connected to the stroke. And in fact, the stroke isn't even connected to the stroke. If I click okay. on the stroke on the side here, you can see I can move right. it away. If I click on the stroke on the top, I can move that away. I'm just going to use Command 3 to zoom back out here. I'm going to get the stroke on the side here. I need to just move my trackpad over to the right just a second, because otherwise I keep... Okay, now, did you see what happened there? Interesting. Let's go down to this bit of stroke here. What happened there? What is going on, you're asking yourself? Why are there only little bits of that stroke? The reason is, is that Flash, that's £100, animate, yeah, I could have got away with that actually by saying when it was that that word, right? animate um, can only have one layer thick of drawing elements. It's meant to represent cell style animation. That's that's the point of it, right? So you don't have things that are stacked on top of each other. Things will, okay, erase any other content underneath. Let me show you that again, this time with feeling. Now you can see I can select parts of this shape oh. by dragging across it like so, which is very useful. In fact, I'm going to delete that chunk just there. Okay, and I'll even delete another chunk just there because you'll see how useful that is in a minute. I'm going to select this one and I'm going to change its fill color. Let's make it nice and easy to see. There's enough contrast there, I think. Now, when I drag this over the top of this one, like so, if I drag it away without deselecting it, then that's fine. Yeah. But if I stop, which I've just done, and then click on it and then move it away, you can see that it's punched itself out from the content beneath. That's okay. That's such an odd behavior if you're not used to that. It is, but the, but it's a, there's a logic to it. Now, because so many people uh, don't like that particular mode because they don't understand what's happening in the first place, that's why Animate defaults to uh, Object Mode, which is the mode that it was in when I first drew the shape, which is kind of odd because I was drawing in there this morning and I didn't have it in Object Mode. But anyway, moving on. So... That's how that's works. So why does it work like that? Well, catch this. Watch my cursor very carefully. Right? Can you see if I go to this corner that the icon, uh, the info icon next to it has changed to an angle? Yeah. That's because it's telling me, hey, you found a corner. I can do stuff with corners like this. Check that out. Oh, okay. Right. So I can deform it. Yeah just by clicking and dragging. I don't need an additional tool to do it. I can deform it just by clicking and dragging. Watch the cursor again. Can you see that it's got a small arc just to the side yeah. of it? It's going, hey, you've got a straight line. I can change that. Ooh. 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 <laughs> you see that? And it does actually, once you get used to it, now I'm halfway through creating an anteater right now by accident. <laughs> See that? But it makes it really easy for you to draw. Remember that when it was Future Splash Animator, not the same F word, when it was Future Splash Animator and then the other F word, I can say it if it's in context, because otherwise I'm going to cost myself an awful lot of money today, which is fair news, I suppose. <laughs> um, it was, like I said, it was meant for frame by frame animation. And so being able to make these changes was advantageous. So I'm just going to go ahead and get rid of some of these uh, strokes here. 
I can just click on each one in turn. I can, of course, click and drag to select things in a boundary. And you've seen that I can already, if I want to shape something, I can click and drag to shape it really, really easily. Right, so I'm going to make a small nick just there, like so. I'm going to pull that out of the way. And then grab hold of this corner and this corner. I didn't actually intend uh, to make an anteater, but I'm going to go with it. Are the chat finding this uh, behavior curious? They are saying, and I quote, Ooh. <laughs> and also Yumacon says, nice, no need to switch tools. And Jane says, another program to learn. Smiley face. Another program, Jane, that, that you will find can actually do a lot for you. You'll, you'll enjoy it. You like playing with stuff anyway. You'll be fine. And Kirsty right. says, it's like magic. It sort of is. In a lot of ways, it, it, it kind of is that the fact that it can do that. Now, you might notice from time to time, yeah, that uh, if I get to a corner and I pull it out to a certain point, that the cursor changes and it's telling me that either it's completed a straight segment or it's made a complete curve of itself. Right, so, but it's kind of nice. Now, why might you want to do that in frame by frame animation? Well, let's have a look, shall we? So, what I'm going to do is down here in the timeline, I currently have a key frame. Now we'll talk a bit more about key frames in a minute. Although of course our fab community that attend regularly uh, will know about a lot about key frames in other products like After Effects from your fantastic crash well, courses course. and so on. So, you know, and if you haven't seen those people, go ahead. They're available on demand so you can go and watch them when you want. So they're, they're sort of the same in that they represent a state change. Okay, here in uh, Animate. Okay, but uh, not exactly the same. They don't have all of the other properties that uh, it's just concerned with what is on the stage area. So I'm going to click in the next available frame space in the timeline. There's nothing actually there at the moment. I need to introduce one. I'm just going to right click here and do insert keyframe. Okay, so now I've got all of the information from the previous frame copied into this frame so i can go ahead and make some changes now so we can see the changes i'm going to turn on onion skinning yeah so what onion skinning is uh is similar to the animators analogy of using bank paper um i, ha I have got some bank paper but not within reach here that's paper that is just opaque enough to draw on okay and just transparent enough to trace through and so you normally start at the back of a pad, you draw your first sketches there, then you lay the next sheet down and you draw the next part of the animation there or the next key stage there. And then you can lift and drop the paper to see, to trick the eye into, into seeing the motion. Mm. That's, that's kind of how it worked. And can you see more than one um, frame? You can, yeah. Points? So you can actually spread out this span. You can actually, there are, it won't spread at the moment because there are only two frames present. Right, yeah. Yes. If you need to spread it so you can see the most recent N frames, yeah, then you can totally do that. Absolutely do that. So let's get, let's get some uh, movement here uh, to start off with. Now, the reason the whole thing moved is because it's all selected, which is normal when a new frame is, is created. So I'm just going to pull this out. Now you will see, okay, part of the other frame just there that blue area underneath right that is the previous frame so i can go ahead and move this one across like so there we are not that both legs would move exactly like this in time it's just i'm just trying to make a point you know and talking of points i'm just going to bring this nose up a little bit nice. <laughs> there we go right and i'll go ahead now and go ahead and make a new frame Okay, so there's a new keyframe just there. The content is copied across one more time. Now, the spread at the moment is showing all three of the last one, and that's normally one. It gets very confusing if you start to have, you know, sort of more than that. Hmm. Yeah, three either side is, ge is generally, or three behind is generally pretty much what you want. And Jane is asking, so your original shape is still intact in the first uh, frame? Absolutely, yeah. 
these are just the sequence. Now, what I'm going to do is because I'm not I'm not going to animate this this crude shape uh, today beyond much beyond this. But if I scrub backwards and forwards, you can see how that's starting to take place. So I'll turn onion skinning off. Right. So this is what you'd see. You see that? Yeah. And so that's why it behaves that way. Yeah. Because you can very quickly make state changes to frame by frame animation, which is what is occurring here right now. Yeah. Now there's another form of animation, which I think I showed last time uh, we were on doing that, which, which is uh, shape tweening. Yeah. So tweening are the stages in between keyframes. Yeah. So people, uh, animators generally uh, draw the first, the, the start, and then the next state of the animation. They don't do all the little bits in between. That's the job of an in-betweener if you're doing it traditional style. It's the job of a computer if you're doing it <laughs> in Animate, which is kind of nice. I'm just going to get rid of um, these frames here. So I'm just going to purge those away. I'm going to go up to uh, frame 25. I think I'm at 30 frames a second. Uh, on this document, I'm pretty sure I am. No, I'm not. I'm at 12 frames a second, which is fine. Okay, so uh, I'll go to 36, which takes me to three seconds of time. Then I'm going to add a keyframe just there. I'm using my keyboard to do that now. Now you know that you can do it from right click. You can also do it from the um, insert menu as well. You can drop that down there. So insert timeline keyframe in there. It doesn't tell you there's a shortcut, uh, but there is. And it's I was F6. about to ask if there was one. Yeah, yeah, there is. It's it's F six. Um, it doesn't mention it because it uses a function key, and of course, function keys are meant to be mm. becoming a thing of the past. Um, really? Although my, are they? yeah, I don't know what. Well, people, for most people, Tim, for most people who just want a computer to look at a spreadsheet and pictures of their cat, yeah, you know, for like norms and all of that, that's that's all they want. They don't need it. F, they think, what is the F keys there for? It's only for you know, how, people like you. How could I ever survive without my F5 key? Yeah, I know, yeah. Yeah, I, when I say disappearing, right, I mean that they're just not self-obvious and you've got to have a keyboard that supports them, which a lot of keyboards oh. these days Or the ever don't. so useful F1 key, which in F1? Windows just Help. open. Yeah, but in, in Windows it's, it's not great. It just opens yeah. Edge and takes you to Bing. And you, it literally just types in the search <laughs> term. So it's great. Value. <laughs> Feature. Value. Oh, dear. In fact, this is one place where I could do with... Now, because these are just ordinary frames, that's why I still don't need a wider span of onion skinning because the state doesn't change until it gets to this keyframe. Does that make sense? So you can see yes. that it's the same, the same, the same, the same, the same, the same, the same 34 times until it gets to here and then it's like change so now i'm i've just got that so i'm just making a very simple movement just here All right i can i can already see the potential the massive potential for error that i've just cooked myself but anyway and also i've moved the whole thing but i'm not too worried about that either by the way um flynn tracy yeah. from uh, team apac has joined us and he's asking is this the new twitter logo it is <laughs> <laughs> yeah, after recent acquisitions of uh, certain oh, social media man. Platforms, they asked us to change the logo and we're coming up with some fresh takes. Yeah. Right I'm now. doing that right now. Yeah. Yeah, I'm doing this is the new Twitter logo. <laughs> That's epic. Right, I know that this is going to go a little bit wrong, but I'm I'm happy with it. So, I'm just going to right click here and choose to create a shape tween. Now, whenever you do anything uh, like create a motion tween. Uh, so there are, there are different kinds of tweening that you can have here. But when you create a shape tween, if you get a solid lined arrow that points to the next keyframe, then it's done something. Yeah, it's, it's computed a result for you. If it's a dotted line, yeah, it means, I don't know what that is. <laughs> and that's usually associated with having more objects on the second keyframe than you drew initially because it doesn't know how to how to successfully resolve the shape between the two let's just have a quick scroll along and see what it's doing you see that's not actually that's better than i thought it was going to be look at that nice so it's calculating those shapes for me now if you want to see more on that you can actually go back to tony and tim's film club which is the most epic series ever yeah, 
mm-hmm. and look at the mm-hmm. archer style um things there because i did use shape tweening on a pen tool just there and i also use something called shape hints which are where you add a little bit of control into that okay but if you're getting to the point where you're drawing things that are overly elaborate it's just it's not not a wise thing to do trust me okay so that's how shape tweening goes so we were being the lead animator just there and we said on this keyframe i want it to look like this on this keyframe i want it to look like that and this little computer army yeah of animators just said let's do this and they did it <laughs> yeah the awkward that's how it artwork artwork the awkward aardvark it is an awkward aardvark and with that it's time for the aardvark to vanish so i'm just going to close that particular document no no (laughs) you were right to say no because there's no (laughs) Uh, i think i'm going to go full hd because that way i get all of everything in the place i want it to be Uh, and also i get 30 frames per second which is the default here 12 frames a second by the way is great if you're outputting animated gifs ideal because you won't get too many gifts to hit the too many frames to hit the frame threshold for lots of apps where they just say you know you can only have this many seconds at this frame. i think it's six seconds maximum i think something like that can't remember off the top of my head but and as we all know um the human eye can only see 12 frames per second anyway we we invent so much stuff with our eyes we really do we make up uh we make up lots of our vision anyway because the foveal cone the one that comes directly out of the eye is so narrow that it's inventing stuff all the time and the stuff that it invents isn't even in color there you go to start off with anyway right moving on but that's a separate discussion for another day (laughs) so you've seen how that works now i did say i would show you what uh, a rectangle primitive looks like now these are in object mode by default Okay, so this is a rectangle primitive. You can tell because it looks slightly different. It's got these little dots on the side. They tell me their corner widgets just there, and I can activate their corners. Okay, using this and this value in, here. We're in front of that. Give me just one second. Ah, oh, sorry. Yes, we are over. just in front of that. There we go. No, no, there sure we go. Is. Thanks. I'll be going back to the other side in a minute. So just while we do this, <laughs> I'll, I'll be ready. <laughs> yeah. We can go ahead, if I just increase that, I'm going to make it, uh, I don't know, something like 75 here, hit return, and you can see I've got that corner radius. You can also do dragging on things like this as well to change them, but uh, that's it. That's what an object is. It's it's sort of like a special group in there, and there are loads of ways you can use those, um, and they can still be used in animations, but they're not going to be used in today's animations, just I wanted to show you. And they have additionally ovals and oval primitive tools the oval primitive tool has a special ability in that it can become like pac-man right it can also have an inner radius so you can dial up an inner radius really really fast like that you can do the end angle so you imagine you wanted to animate some sort of growth Mm, over time style infographic and you could calculate the percentages for that which shouldn't be too difficult if you if you just create your base unit around 360 degrees then you should be able to achieve that pattern fairly easily and so you could set it at let's say the value was zero it's a good value to start at and then it was going to finish at 342 you could animate that across time or you just times it by 3.6 and get your or times it by 3.6 absolutely yep yeah well i mean that's what you get if you get one percent of the thing in it isn't it so that's that's where you end up with it but yeah, so that's kind of useful. You can make the start angle separate from uh, the end angle as well. Uh, great fun. It's actually very Good interesting fun to, because fun to... in the next Crash Course, uh, All About Expressions Part 2, I will do yes. a very similar demo. And I will actually um, do the conversion between uh, degrees and percentages as like a small hack. I like it. I like it. I haven't managed to watch um, Mondays yet because I was too, too busy Shame. this week, but I should watch it the weekend. Shame I know. on you, Tony. Oh, yeah. I'll watch it on Saturday. I promise. <laughs> I will, I will, I will. And then you've got the Polystar tool, which is, you know, the thing for shapey shapies. But, you know, <laughs> for stars if you and polygons. Up, if you look it up but it's just manual, nice. It, it just Sorry. Says, if you look it up in the user manual, it, it says tool for shapey shapies. well you know it's it is kind of handy because you've got 
you can change these values about it. Stapler accident finger should be able to help me out with that. If and it would it would help me out if I had the thing selected. Um, or if oh no, you do that one before you draw it. That's it. So let me just go ahead and get that tool. And I'm gonna have the number of sides, the star point rate. I'm gonna put a point uh six. Let's try that and draw that out. No, I should have been greater than that. So we'll try that at a bigger number. Do do do. A one will take us right the way out. It's not behaving. Da, da, da. But anyway, you can get you all have of these to extra select points them first. They actually this one works before the tool is is active. Oh, uh, okay. So you have to. Yeah, it's kind of weird. Ah, and also I didn't set it up for star. Well, there you go. Been, which would have been handy. Yeah. So then you get. There uh -huh. you go. Yes. Top tip: set set your tool options to star if you want to create a star. Yes. Yeah. It... <laughs> ah. <laughs> oh, brilliant. Only on Adobe Live. That's where you learn those things. Only on Adobe Live. Now, just going back to the uh, regular shapes where I should be in. Du, 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 du. There you go. I'm going to turn object drawing. Mode. I'll just turn it back on. Okay. Turn off. Off, I said. <laughs> Man. It doesn't want to turn off at all. It's giving me the griefs. Okay, fine. Anyway, I can just break it apart. Let me just go and pick that up and break it apart. Like so. So that's broken apart. Now, if you remember earlier, these things are all separate segments and everything else. You can select them all at once if you want to move the whole thing by double clicking on it. Double clicking will, with a shape, because the behavior changes if you use any of the other types of things, the polystar, th uh, sorry, not the polystar, the, um, the shapes mode things. Yeah, that, that behavior will change, but here you are. That selects everything connected to it. Even if it's only connected to it a bit, if it's part of the shape. So I've got a free transform tool here. I can just go ahead and spin this around a bit and connect it to something, or I can try. There we go. If it's connected to part of that shape, it should select. It's not going to do it now. Oh, it's just getting the bit that's, in it, that's connected to okay, it. Okay, so it has to be touching. Yes, for it to work. It is an odd thing to start off with, right? But it it it's lovely. And Illustrator actually owes this product quite a lot of uh, a lot of things. A lot of things that started to appear ever since uh, Illustrator CS4 actually came from the tech that Adobe acquired when they when they um, bought it from Macromedia. And the things that they picked up, which you, which are evidenced in Live Paint and in Shape Builder, those mm. are all using Live Paint using Live Paint functions, which come from Animate or under its former name. And there's a question in chat. Yeah, Mark asks, how can I create a book cover uh, in this program? I'm going to. I know it's terribly rude to answer a question with a question. <laughs> why? <laughs> why? <laughs> do you actually mean like a book cover, book cover, or do you want a, an illustration of a book cover? Uh, the question says, "How can I create a book cover uh, on this program?" Yeah, it's not really for that sort of thing. Okay. It's, yeah, so, if you uh, if you mean the artwork for a book cover, yeah, that's it's not that sort of thing. It's not a document type program. Yeah, you might want to check out Illustrator, perhaps. Or yeah, in design, in design, or Photoshop. If you want to paint a book cover yeah. in Animate, of course, you can take those book covers which you have created in other apps and then uh, animate them. But usually, book covers. I mean, <laughs> unless you're living in the Harry Potter universe, book covers usually are not animated. <laughs> I mean, they could be. We live in a VR world now, you know. Yeah. Uh, that is actually something that Animate can uh, generate for you. It can. It can. One of its document types is VR. It can even do 360 VR. Mm. So, you know, crazy stuff. But that's a whole, whole other beastie. Right. Now, we've got uh, 
we've got a couple of different brush tools. In fact, I've got three brush tools here. One of them shouldn't really be in here. Uh, this paintbrush tool shouldn't really be there. So I've got the brush tool. B is the accelerator to get to that. I've also got the fluid brush tool. And um, for that, Illustrator users, you can read blob brush because the behavior is very, very similar to the blob brush. Uh, but I've got the classic brush here, and then I've got some options on the side so I can set the minimum size for it. I'm using my uh, tablet just uh, or my Cintiq at the moment, not really a tablet, um, just for this so I can set the minimum size for a brush there, the amount of smoothing uh, as well with it. And I've got a bunch of different brush tip sizes here with um, this. This is one of the older ones. Go on, sorry. I can see it responds to pressure and tilt. Yes, it does. You turn those on just up here. So there's the uh, tilt icon just there. So if you enable pressure and tilt, then they are on. Love it. And then you can do it. You can do drawing with it and you will get a stroke. And if tilt, of course, isn't going to work when I'm using a round brush, mm. but tilt will be more evident if I'm using something like an oblique or something like that. I can change there by changing the tilt angle. Uh, and because I'm on the Cintiq, I can actually just turn the stylus over and do erasing. Well, you have to be careful with things like that. Did you see how I just rubbed that little bit yeah. out just there? Now, I'm going to zoom in just here on this small bit. <gasps> I left stuff behind. Bum, bum, bum. You have to be careful of that because it can stop an animation from working. So... You've got to be careful about where you're drawing like that because, or erasing, you need to make sure that you do it properly you know, because otherwise it can cause things to go wrong. Right, I'm going to get the lasso. So and I've got a lasso here. Caroline yeah, sorry, says, Tim. dilemma. I need to get food, but don't want to miss anything. That's all right. We'll just wait. Just chew, chew carefully on the corner of your laptop or monitor. Just uh, gnaw <laughs> for a minute. Or if you're wearing a belt, Take that off and chew it. I've told leather or, you know, leather-like things are super tasty at lunchtime. <laughs> if you're hungry. Mmm. <laughs> More coffee. Yes, yes. The, uh... All right, so we can. Brushes here create fills. Yeah. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose a colour from here. I'm actually going to use stapler accent finger to drop the color down because what I might want to do is I might want to sketch something and this is one of the great things about this tool I can just come in and start sketching with that I'm just going to make sure that my size here is a bit smaller than it was before and just pull the minimum size around to one is fine so let's do a test stroke there we are that's nice I'm using the wrong tip shape for me so I'm going to set that like so and let's uh, let's just do some scribbling now so I'm going to do no particular plotting just here. I'm just going to scribble out something like this. Here we go. Make a couple of things just a little bit more definite, maybe just at the minute. And while you're doing that, I would just like to remind everyone that, first of all, if you're watching this on YouTube or anywhere else, uh, then join us over on Behance. Just put the link into the chat on YouTube, and I will also show it on stream. There we go. And another reminder, we will be live from off next week. So, Whoa. Is addition, it next week? Yeah. Gosh, it is. So in addition to the regular programming here on Adobe Live, you will have more streams coming up, which will be on uh, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. We will start streaming at 12 UK time and we'll be live until 5 UK time. Live till 5. And after that, of course, the regular Adobe Live US programming will follow. Nice. Um, so if you're interested in some portfolio reviews, some talks from speakers uh, at off, or even some just... Um, well, yeah, portfolio reviews, both in person and live. That's what I meant to say. Then, yes, join us and uh, see what we're up to uh, on our first event since 2020, I think. No. Are you going to be there in person, Tim? Yeah, yeah. Oh, 
They will fly me over. And I will fly have... me to the off. And I will have my knees probably next to my in ears the sand. for the entire duration Hell of yeah. the flight. I, just... I hope they put you in a front row seat, man. I just I really do. The, um... <laughs> I'll be flying the plane. I'll be flying the plane. <laughs> You'll be gaffer taped to the wing. <laughs> Wee! You'll turn up at the door and they'll just go, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, I want to show, so I've done some scribbling just here, as you can see. We, I was scribbling away as I was talking to you because this is something you can do when you're using keyframes, right? I don't need a, I could scribble this on a layer and start above, but what I can do is put a new blank keyframe in there okay and then turn on onion skinning and suddenly i've got like a reference layer without having to do anything to mess around with opacity and then i can just start working on that from there it's kind of cool right it is yeah i like it i like it <laughs> i like it a lot and then i could just work out how i'm going to build such a thing so really, I just wanted to show you how I could sketch out uh, in that way. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to choose uh, another color just here. So we've got a color picker here. We can also access uh, a larger dialogue if we need to. It comes in set in RGB here. But if you want to go back to the familiar hue, saturation and brightness, you can just click on the H just there and it'll take you to that if you want to mix your own colors in that way because you can. Right. And when you do that, you can also, they get added to the bottom here as well if you're using them. Right. The alpha here, I am going to make sure it's 100%, which it says it is. I just picked the other color, didn't I? There we go. So that should be fully opaque. Let's just do a quick test with that. Steve is yeah. being very naughty. Who's being naughty? Steve Festers. Is he? Yeah. He says, how are you guys going to survive working five whole days a week? First of all, it's six now. Thanks. <laughs> oh, Steve. I'm doubly sad I'm not going to be there now, you know. Okay. Well, I really am now that I know that you're there. I didn't know if you were going or not. It only occurred to me when you said, you know, and I thought, oh, you'd be on the nice little AV desk in the concourse. You will. Be nice. You'll It'll like it. Like it, I, I, uh, on the upside, me not going meant that uh, Alexandra can go. So, which is kind of good. So, I feel, I feel less bad about it because he gets to go, which is nice. I will be in America. So, and oh, you uh, McCoy yes. is asking an important question: Have we saved yet? <laughs> <laughs> no we have not yet i will save in a minute once i've done anything really oh, i'm going to save now make me feel bad i'm going to just do it and just it's a good idea i'm surprised annika didn't say it yeah is she in the chat um yeah why didn't you say, Annika? What's going on? What goes on in Annika land that you're not sort of reminding me to, how to do my job? <laughs> it's a terrible show, that is. Uh, I'm just going also, I'm going to draw something else now. So I'm getting the uh, thing here. I don't want a stroke on this. I just want the color. Do, do, do. Pick it from there. There we go. And I'm going to draw this using just a bunch of rectangles. Normally, yeah. I would probably just cringe at this because drawing rectangles and then trying to transform them is not the way I would work ever. But in Animate, it's actually fine. It's kind of, I, I find it a bit therapeutic. It's kind of like working with plasticine. It's, you know, you're just molding stuff it's, up and... It's just hmm. so different from the way I'm used to working with it. Hold on, what happened there? Uh, it just suddenly started being a negative shape. It's just like me. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. But it, yeah, it makes it 
cool. It's nice and cool and easy to work. I, I like it. it. No, you are cool. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so there you angus. go. I can take that to a straight line and okay. then, whoops, then accidentally uh, select the whole thing and then just bend that out to a curve like so. See, it's nice and organic. I love it. It's actually, it's actually I, really, uh, really cool. It is cool. It's it's a great, great tool. Um, you can also, if you want to, you know, you can import uh, artwork from Illustrator into here uh, if you want. And there's a whole importer thing for that. Doo doo. Oh, look. <gasps> Compound shape. I thought I'd show it to you again because you liked it, but it vanished <laughs> as soon as as soon as I'd finished. So it's a bit of a false thing, really. But look at that. See, you can do this. I wonder if there are any people watching who learned this stuff from me years and years ago. I thought, why didn't it let us build cool cars like that? Why did we just have to have rectangles? <laughs> I used to teach this every fourth week. For about seven years and the reason it was every fourth week was because i was teaching either illustrator or photoshop or indesign on the other three weeks and there's some some of them on half week so i'd start off the week teaching photoshop and end up the week finish doing indesign unless it was a master class in which case it would be a bit of both there we go but yeah, I used to do this car animation on uh, on day one. Do a whole load of things, investigating the drawing first, and then we'd do this car animation thing, which would be fun. And by the way, just time update, we have about half of the stream left. Wow. So Okay, I'm going to crack on. <laughs> time to get a wriggle on. All right, so I'm going to draw an oval. I am going to make sure that the oval is a different color. Actually, I'm going to try and get it at the same size first. So Q is the uh, shortcut for the free transform tool in here. Okay, and I'm holding down shift as well. I want a rectangle of about that size. So that's good. Let's change the fill color of that. Perfect. It is now dissimilar to the other. And I'm going to option drag a copy of that to about there, something like that. No, I didn't option drag it. I'm not too worried. I'll do that now. There we go. Or I did option drag it, but I released it too quickly. Right, I'm going to go ahead with that. Then I can click on this one, delete, click on this one, delete. Yay. Well, I'm going to click easy. on this one. It's just super easy. Super, super easy. Then I'm going to make some uh, changes just here. Okay, so I'm going to bring that one down. And I think I'll have one that's... Actually, that's a good size for the first one. So, so does do that and that. Does yeah. everything live in Animate on the same layer, or can you have more than one? You can have more than one layer. Yeah, 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 absolutely. You can add more layers down here, and I will be doing shortly. Um, it's just that while I'm drawing this element, I can just work away on one layer here. Oh, okay. It's uh, I because I do want these things. Now, in a moment, these are going to be uh, removed from this layer. The only thing that will actually exist on this layer for a little while will be this shape uh, just here. That's going to be the only right. thing uh, just for a little bit. Okay, so uh, we can do that. I haven't got... Um, one of the things I am ought to do really, you know, is uh, do something with the brush tool. Just before I go ahead and do these circles, I'm just going to switch back to the brush tool. I'm going to choose a different color. So maybe something like that. Because the brush tool has modes and can do different things with these different modes. As modes tend to be, that's kind of their purpose, that you can do things differently with them. Yeah, 45 Here, different modes. They do all yeah. do the same thing. Here, exactly. <laughs> like my stream deck. The, uh, <laughs> right, so paint normal. If you paint normal with that, so I'm going to do some painting here, right? There's a shape that I've just painted. Here's another shape that I've just painted, right? If I go ahead and select those, because they are of a common color, they will join together, okay? Not always what you want. So what I can do as well with my brush tool is I can do things that will paint fills only. That's really nice if you're 
decorating something that's already filled. Paint behind is useful. That particular mode is useful. I'm going to make myself a much, much larger brush for a second. Yeah. And then I'm going to paint like this, like, whoa, crazy. Just like, I don't even like the geometry of that car. Go that's away. Not, that's not behind. It is now. Uh, oh, that's sneaky. <laughs> So that's what that transforms it at that particular point. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah. It's kind of handy because sometimes you want it to do that. Sometimes you only want it to paint within a selection. Yeah. Sometimes you want it to paint inside. And when you say paint inside, it's wherever your first brush tip is detected, it will paint there. So let me just, let me do that for you. So what I'm going to do is choose a different color here. I'm going to go for something that's a bit warmer than that yellow. Is that enough contrast? No. So I'll go with this. Right, okay, so I'm I'm set to paint inside mode. All right, ready? And then I'm gonna start painting just here. But that's not inside. It is inside the yellow because that's where my brush tip went down. Ah, I see. Do you see? Yeah. So, just excuse me one sec, hold on one second. Apologies. All right. Okay, so I'm just gonna undo that. So imagine if I wanted to put some shading into that window, right? To kind of suggest that it's not a flat shape. Mm -hmm. I can go ahead and start brushing just here. Go across like this. Do, do, do. <laughs> Doof. That's nice. Yeah. It and just that's... recognizes. Sorry. No, no. Go ahead. No, it just recognizes the the, the geometry of the um, of the shape. And then just says, right, okay, this is the only place in which I'm painting now. Thanks very much. Thanks for telling me that, and I'll just crack on with it. But after yeah. it sort of applied the mode, uh, then it just turns into a regular shape that you can then drag around yep. if you wanted to. Yep, just becomes another. So now, whereas before I had two shapes, now I've got three. Yeah, because it can only be one thickness. Can you uh, see that? Huh. Now, at the moment, if I come away from there, it's going to chop away that bit of the corner of the car. Right. Yeah, if I, de if I went like that, and deselected it and moved it you can see that it's cut that away oh okay yeah no yeah. I'm, I'm starting to understand everything you do <laughs> Slow, <laughs> slowly but, but surely and but wow. it's a it's a strange old thing but it is beautiful yes you just have to get used mm. to it i suppose and yeah as we saw it is really really useful the way you just stamped out the um circles from the car really you cool. can you can uh, you can create some incredible things just with you know you, you just have to think differently because I spend most of my time in Illustrator. Um, it, I have to kind of work with this for a little while before I remember, and I think, oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> and could you modify the edge of that um, that drawn? Oh yeah, you can. All right. Is there some sort of sensitivity that says how many points are drawn or is that dependent on something? It's, it depends on the line segment. So okay. as you can see, I didn't have smoothing turned on here. So there are quite a few line segments there. If we zoomed in, right, can you see there's yeah. quite a lot yeah. there? So here that would only bend that part oh. because that's the line segment just there. This one's perhaps just a bit longer. Can you see that? Yeah. And now they're both responding to each other. Is it possible to smoothen that, to reduce, like simplify uh, the... Image? You can simplify them, yeah. Okay. I mean, the best thing to do is... Uh, and and that, that would just in involve a couple of different things. But you can uh, you can smooth them out. Okay. Yeah, but it's going to take a longer process than that at, just at the minute. <laughs> yes. And Angus is uh, saying, a bit like sculpting. Easy to take away, really hard to put it back again. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's a, that is a good way of thinking of it. That really is a good way of thinking of it. So what I'm going to do now is I am going to uh, apply some different colors here. So I'm going to have something in that region. And then I'm going to go ahead and have something in maybe that region. And then here, I'm going to go crazy ape poop bonkers. Wait, what? I'm going to put a gradient in here. So, yeah, I know. Contain your, try and contain your enthusiasm. <laughs> I'm clicking here for the swatches panel. In my usual layout, the swatches panel, that's the other thing. In my normal layout, the swatches panel isn't there. So I'm like, oh, where is it? <laughs> I'm 
I'm going to choose a gradient from here. If anybody from the Illustrator team is watching today, because I know you do on Wednesdays, right? If you're watching, if you're sat at home right now, having your dinner, watching, can you listen to this request again? Because when we talked about gradients in Delhi, you went and forgot straight away. It was very naughty. <laughs> So gradients uh, here work very, very differently yeah, to, uh, to the way they work in, in, in uh, Photoshop, Illustrator, InDesign. There's even a gradient transform tool. Ooh, okay. so exciting. In fact, it's so exciting that I think it warrants me zooming in on this shape so that you can see more of it. Right, so you might have noticed, if you used uh, gradients previously in uh, in Illustrator, you might notice that this is very, very similar to the gradient annotator, which again, was one of those things that mysteriously appeared in CS4. Right, so this is very similar in that you can change the size of it. So it's got a widget to change the size of it. It's got a couple actually. You can also change how elliptical it is. Just there, you can spin it around and rotate it. You can also, and Illustrator can do this as well, but it's kind of tucked away. It doesn't have a really nice piece of gorgeous UI like this does. You can offset the center. Oh, wow. Which gives you lots and lots of shading possibilities. And I mean like lots of shading possibilities. Yeah, look at that. Can you see the difference there? Yeah. In that the center, and this is something else you can animate, by the way. You can create some right hypnotoad style animations just by having a simple shape. I used to have one on a website. It only had one page and it had a ball that changed hypnotoad styley. And it was just done with shape tweens and moving the gradient around. It's good fun. Try it out for yourselves. It's good. You've seen how the shape tween thing works. So not only have you got that good, good, good stuff from there, you've also got a couple of other gradient modes that you can explore now i should because it's not in my layout there you go i should be able to access this one so it's a radial gradient right and it's showing extend color what that means is whatever color is at the stop on the end continue extending that outwards in terms of relationships with things like illustrator exactly the same that's what it does yeah this just determines the span of the active gradient and that just overfills but flash, uh, another hundred pounds, animate <laughs> can do this. It can reflect the color. So you can get this crazy. This is what I meant about the hypnotoad Ooh. thing. Oh no, <laughs> right? It's so much. It is warranting of that particular. Whoa. Give me your bank account details. <laughs> PM me. Yeah. Right, anyway, moving on. Not, so not only can it do that, but it can also repeat. That's all, the folks. Gradient. Egg, now, that was exactly what I was going to do because I was actually going to double-click the white stop here. And <laughs> so then I was going to be able to be able to be But aren't those things cool? They are. You know, they are, like, epic that you can do that. Why can't Illustrator do that? That's what annoys me. So if you are watching from the Illustrator team, come on, man. We're bros. <laughs> Just, you know. <laughs> the Tony Hammer feature update coming soon. April 1st, <laughs> 2023. But look. Okay. It's very that's, cool. That's That's wild. I think so. Anyway, those things aside, for this particular project, I just want a gradient, just like a regular common or garden gradient, which is what I'm actually hunting and pecking for right now. There we are. So there's my gradient transform tool. I can use the color panel here, okay, to change the gradient type, okay, from there. In fact, the fill type as complete. And what I want to do is just mix up a couple of colors. So I want something in this sort of range here and on this side 
and have like a grey ish colour. That works pretty well, I think. Good. Right, now that I've done that, what I'm going to do is command two. So I go out to the whole thing. And then I want to do some aligning. So I'm making absolutely sure that I'm selecting around those things. Okay, and then I'm going to align them to the center on both axes and then make sure I move them out of the way. Oh man, too late. Do you know why that happened, Tim? Tell me. Oh, I'm going to show you because I had this option aligned to stage turned on. Of course. I from knew the that. job I was just working on the last thing. So when I turn that off, yeah, they should align to one another nicely. There we go. And then I can align to center. But of course, they're in the wrong stacking order. So I've kind of got to change that around a bit so and you know in the chat they are liking this so much they are requesting to have uh, regular animated content perhaps even on the us side as a masterclass. that would be nice we could do that i'm not even sure if there's a an evangelist for animate uh there's probably joseph lebrec would probably oh, yeah. be yeah if, jojo so if, if anybody from the adobe live team is watching no hang on they are. I can, <laughs> I can hook you up. I know people. Okay. Now, I just want to show you that what I'm actually doing here at the moment, I don't want this to be super perfectly geometrically gorgeous as it was before. So I'm actually bending, freeforming the shape of this. This, spoiler alert, this is going to be a tire and a wheel, right? So I'm not too worried about whether they're completely aligned or not because it's very difficult in animation, right, to make a perfect circle, make it obvious that a perfect circle with no identifying marks is rotating. Very mm. hard. Yeah. <laughs> you, can do the ro you can do the rotating thing as much as you like, but you won't be able to see it. It's just like, is that moving? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, might be a render glitch. <laughs> right, let's get into some anim. So... Now I've drawn that particular shape, which hopefully will fit in my wheel arch, but I'm not too worried if it doesn't, so I can adjust that. I've selected that content. I need to turn it into something that can be animated, right? Because this shape can only be animated with a shape tween. If you try and animate anything else, let me just go ahead and add a new layer just for a second. Right, new layer, got a circle on it just there. I'm going to lock the layer underneath, All right? Uh, just in case, right? But this is on that layer so i can just relieve it and like that and it doesn't interact with the content underneath the layer at all if i try and animate this so let's go uh, and add and in fact i'm going to use a modern tween for this right and I'll, you'll see the difference between this so i'm going to just right click on this layer on this keyframe rather and say create motion tween right and it tells me this can't be tweened because the shape it doesn't know what to do with it so it needs to be converted into a symbol in order for that to work. All right. So animation, apart from shape animation, takes place with symbols, right? So I'm going to cancel that. I'm going to hide this layer just in case I need it again later on. And I'm going to unlock and make visible uh, the layer on which I've been doing all the drawing, just which should be just here. I've just turned the visibility off. There we go. I'll also need to resolve the fact that I've got content on this layer, which can now be removed. So I'm just going to delete that. I'm going to go to this frame here, click on the frame, which is very much like clicking, up, clicking, clicking on the um, on the proxy region in Illustrator. Yeah, in the layers panel, it just selects everything that's inside that frame. I'm going to cut that and to go to the preceding frame and then just paste that down like so. This frame here, I don't need it for the minute, so I'm just going to get rid of that using a shortcut shift F5, just so you know. So to animate this, it needs to be a symbol. So I'm going to turn this into a symbol. Now there is a shortcut for that. Again, F keys, F8, but because you might not have them, I'm going to go to modify, convert to symbol. Okay, so once it does that, this is what I get. I get this thing. So I'm going to call this one wheel because the clue should be in the name, I think. Yeah. Uh, now there are three types of thing this could be yeah one of them i have not used for probably 15 years 
Yeah, <laughs> I, I would think, and that would be button. Actually, no, it wouldn't be that long. But it's at least at least eight years since I last used button, right? And buttons have states. That's where they're different. But their graphic, which doesn't do anything particularly, it's just a thing. Uh, we'll use some of those later on. And then movie clips. And movie clips are things that can do things. And because this is a wheel, and you're going to see what those things are. I know that's a very vague description, but I'm aware also that I've got 25 minutes and I need to right. bang on. So the very important thing here, right at this particular moment, is setting this registration point out of the grid of nine just here to the center, because that generally tends to be the axis upon which wheels operate yeah no point in putting an axle into the top of a wheel because it's going to go like <laughs> clown car styly <laughs> yeah so <laughs> needs to be in the middle uh, everything else here the advanced stuff unless you are scripting in here action script is very similar to like expression language in uh after effects it's, it's not the same thing but it is an ecma script right which is the same family as javascript so you should be able to just port your existing javascript skills across to action script once you know the library of, uh, mm. of, of things that can be affected by it and um, a question about symbols from uh, Stuart: does yep. changing its element when as a symbol change all the other uh, symbol states uh, yes it does repeated yes it does so any in as soon as this becomes a symbol it's moved into a separate part of the program. And the thing that I made the symbol from becomes an instance of it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let me do that. I'm going to hit OK just now because everything else there is set exactly right. I don't need to worry about the folder uh, for that because I'm not creating an application. Library root is just fine. So it's, a, it's called wheel. It's a movie clip. And its registration point is the center. That's the main takeaway. Now, you can see that its appearance has changed. It will also now no longer interact with that shape. They're like different things. Yeah, they're like me and Kate Winslet. They do not interact, <laughs> yeah. unfortunately. Yeah, until I become like Kate Winslet, and I'm not going to become a movie star, so it's not going to happen, really, is it? I'm kind of waking up to that now. Right. So here it is, and it's an instance. Now, if we look at this region in the properties panel, just here. It tells me that what I currently have selected. So if I select the car body, it just says, yeah, man, that's a shape. That's all I have to say about it. If I click on the movie clip instance, it tells me what I've got selected is a movie clip. However, just to throw a little bit of confusion into the mix, if I wanted it to behave like a graphic, I could make it behave like a graphic. There are some times you want to do that. You might have drawn a whole load of things that are graphics with no special properties, but one, one exception that does have special properties. So it's kind of confusing, but that's the way it works. Uh, you can name an instance. So if you're making an interactive project, you could actually give it a name. So I could call this, for, for example, F wheel, like so for front wheel, they're like that. And it would have that name, which means you could address it in code. So you could write, you know, da da da, -da this, this being F wheel, do this to it, and then you could do it. So that's why you can do that. Okay, but it tells me here where it is. All of that good stuff, right? So get all of that in the properties panel. However, I want to do something else with it because it's not very exciting at the moment. So I'm going to delete it. I'm so offended by it. I'm going to instead create a new symbol, not from artwork. So I'm not converting to a symbol. I'm creating a new symbol. And I'm going to call this one Motion Wheel. Ooh, ooh. Boof. You'll notice the absence of a grid of nine there. That's because the middle of that grid of nine happens to be this crosshair just here. Yeah, it's the registration point. And all you're doing when you click on the grid of nine is saying this is the registration point for that object. I am going to go to my library. So it's not the same thing as a Creative Cloud library. This is a document-based library. InDesign has its own library system as well. So, you know, it kind of works like that. You can see this is the current symbol I have selected, motion wheel, which is empty. And you can see that reflected in the preview here. If I go to wheel, it goes, yeah, this is what wheel looks like. I'm going to bring wheel in to this new movie clip. So now motion wheel looks very, very similar apart from the registration point. Yeah, you can see motion wheel looks very similar to that. Yeah. Right. So 
This is where I need to make sure that my alignment is pretty much on point. So this is one instance where align to stage actually means align to registration point. That's what I want it to do. So I'm going to say align it to the registration point in the center. Now, if you're looking closely, I can just zoom in a bit here. You can see there's the registration point. This is the registration point for wheel. And I want those two things to match. At the moment, I've only made them align on the horizontal axis. And now I need them to do it on the vertical axis as well. So if I choose center, they are now at one with each other. Yeah. Very cool. Yes. Just slowly starting to wrap my head around why you uh, first had to create a new symbol and then just import the same symbol. I assume that we are going to rotate it over here and then have a rotating wheel. Man, honestly, it's like you're wearing a design ninja hat and you're telepathically linked to me. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> like to be fair, Oliver this is. is essentially my second time seeing animate in action. Really? Well, yeah, the first time oh. I was in the film club and this is really the second. I've, I've seen it before, yeah, but never really understood it. Oh, man, wait until you come over here. I'm going to give you a machine and just, you know, you can rock out on it. <laughs> I'm going to come over so I don't sit here in front of my computer and uh, play with no, the you just spend, just spend maybe like eight hours here. The rest of the time I'll spend, be out doing stuff. I'll come over there and spend <laughs> some time in front of the computer. Yep. Okay, so, right then. Let me show you some animation. Now, I'm going to show you a modern tween first. Right, so I'm going to choose, we've got two tweens here for these, classic tween, okay, and motion tween. A classic tween involves you in creating both of the necessary keyframes, right? And it is required for some types of export, right? It won't work properly uh, if it's not a, a classic tween. But a motion tween is much, much easier, right? So if I do that, it immediately gives me one second's worth of frames this is 30 frames a second so it's extended that frame out now okay to frame 30 and you'll notice that the playhead right or if you want to use after effects and premiere terminology the cti the current time indicator uh, then it's the playhead in in uh, animate okay but it moves to that point i can then make some changes so i could for example go to my object here and then just transform it in certain ways. I've got position, rotation, size, all of that good stuff uh, in there. Okay, my X and Y location and all of that good groovy stuff. And then I can make a change. Just for the minute, because I'm going to use a classic tween on this, I'm just gonna make a couple of changes here. So let me zoom out a little bit. Okay, so I am going to, at this point in time, move it here. And th uh, right now, this should be firing your After Effects neurons because you'd be going, all oh, right, it's a motion path. Do, 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 like that. You just move the playhead, position it where you want it to be, and that's how it works. You see that? Right, okay, yeah, yeah. I'm with you so, so that's far. one way to do it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I could do things and rotate it in that way. However, I need to do this one for the export type that I'm going to use as a classic tween. So I'm going to go to frame 30. Let me just get back onto the thing here. I'm using Command 2 to zoom in on that. I'm going to right click and choose Insert Keyframe because something needs to change. I'm going to go to my Transform, okay, and I am going to rotate this by 359 degrees, okay, at that particular point in time. So 359, just there. You'll see there's also exciting other stuff like 3D rotation and 3D center point stuff in there. So at the minute, if I go between the two frames, you might not notice too much difference, right? Because they're so, so close together. However, when I actually tween this, so if I say create a classic tween, solid line arrow pointing to the next keyframe means that anime understands what I'm after. Yeah. Okay. You've got, got this in this keyframe. You've got this in this keyframe. And if you're animating like this, it can only be you know, this way, right? You can't look, put drawn objects in there as well. And, and now has, what should happen... If it has a dotted line, animate doesn't know what you want. It, it, it doesn't know what you want at all. It's like, okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. Whatever. <laughs> now, I've had some trouble making this stick today, actually. I don't know why that is. It works eventually, but 
let me just go back to that and just see. See, it's just taken that rotation off. Just gone minus. Ah, it's gone for minus one because it's doing it by what it thinks is the most efficient way. So I'm just going to pull that up bit by bit by bit. And as a control, I can turn off for that. Just trying to think which one was going to help me out. There you go. So I'm going to three, five, eight, three, five, nine, that sort of region. Ah, it's because it, I've specified the angle incorrectly the rotation angle i can fix that in a second three five nine let's see if that worked this time or if it's just doing the minus one thing no right okay so the rotation needs to be uh in 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 frame object and rotation needs to be oh man this interface so so different to mine that's document frame. I should have a rotation option just there, and I should be able to set that to clockwise. Let me try. Ah, it's the wrong frame. I'll go to that one, and then it will show me that. Right, so uh, tweening properties together. That's fine. Rotate is clockwise. Now, if it doesn't, there you go. See that? Oh, so since you rotated it almost for yeah. rotation, animate thought. All right, I could yeah. just go the other way. Yeah, that's right. It's just, because it was set to auto, it thought, well, there's only a tiny state change in it. So I'm just going to do it minus one degrees. That was all it was. Okay. Now I can play this. I've got transport controls. So that's the way we refer to those things, by the way. I know you know that, Tim, but everybody else. Are, transport controls are just here. Uh, I can loop. So I'm just going to get this to play out. I'm also going to spread it across the entire timeline, just there, of this thing. And if I press it, Hopefully, you should be able to see that oscillating enough to give you the illusion that it looks like a wheel. Can you see that okay? Yeah. Groovy. Right. So, up at the top here in this bar, this is where we navigate with things. And again, this is something that looks very, very similar to Illustrator. Massive clue. Okay. <laughs> and I'm just going to click on the arrow there to take me back out to our main animation. Okay. And then make a change here so let me go to uh view the whole thing this thing by the way i can bring into place just here like so do you know we should have we should have had a two or three parter of this we could have done all sorts of crazy stuff but i mean we did it who knows know. maybe we will come back if chat is interested um i haven't yeah. asked the question but chat Tell us, is this your first time having a deeper look into Animate? And if so, are you interested perhaps to see more? In another one. Let us know. Uh, I am, meanwhile, just resizing this slightly here. So I'm using the transform tools here. And now that I've got that, I'm going to option drag, holding down shift because I want them to be in the same place, a copy of that. So they have to be instances of motion wheel. Let's just check. They are both instances of motion wheel. So now we have our main timeline, which at the moment only has one frame. It also has a redundant layer, which I'm now going to get rid of. And I'm going to rename this one as car, because it's kind of a good idea to give that a name. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And then how, how long is this movie going to be? I think it's going to be like three seconds. So at 30 frames a second, I need, in fact, let's make it four seconds. Let's go crazy bonkers. And I just need a regular frame here because nothing else is going to change, particularly with that so a regular frame i think is going to work oh actually no something might change thinking about it no i'm not going to do a regular frame just yet i'm going to go back to the beginning i'm going to select all of the car stuff so i can select everything here and then shift deselect the other items i'm going to turn this car body into uh, a symbol itself so of course just to show you again modify convert a symbol we'll call this car like so i could give it a separate registration point in fact I could, i'm going to i'll give it the bottom registration point just there you watch that bite me when i'm when i'm working later on <laughs> super good right so now that is a symbol these have got their own independent doohickey going on and what i think i'll do here is i'm going to separate these out just for giggles i'm going to add a new layer which I'm going to call wheels like that. They can just sit on their own thing. Let's have those out there. Go to the wheels layer and 
paste those down. Uh, sorry, in the right place. Shift Command V to do that here. They're going to exist for the whole timeline. I said four seconds, didn't I? So four times 30 is 120. So I'm just going to go and find 120. There, there it is. And I'm going to hit F5 to give me a blank keyframe. So just the wheels exist at that point. Yeah. I'm going to zoom out on my timeline a bit so I'm not scrolling around like a mad person thingy thingy on that. I'm a crazy, insane, loving this stuff person. Uh, I'm now going to create, I am going to create a motion tween here because it's going to be nice and easy for me to do what I want to do. So I'm going to pull that out so it covers the whole span. Then I am simply going to take my playhead to a few different places. And I'm going to nudge using the keyboard just up a little bit there and i'll move along a bit and nudge down you can see that keyframes are being generated as i do that right so any any change occurring there is triggering a difference in the keyframes or a keyframe to be added because something's going on are people going to try this out tim are they are they giving you any they actually, information that they're going to give it a go they have unanimously decided that yes um there should be more uh, animate content and nice. for many of them this is their first time apart from linda who says wow. not my first time but more please i messaged Linda earlier i don't know if you got my message linda i missed your message from last week but i messaged her today Someone woke up from their nap. Okay. Well, welcome back. <laughs> I mean, if you're still what, watching... Napping I'm while I'm showing stuff? Hey, it, as long as the video is still playing. <laughs> right, okay, you. this is going to loop. Let's have a go. Let's uh, make this play. Ah, right now. Everything there should be set to uh, actually play. Let's just give that... There we go. Now, you might notice at the moment right that when this goes the body is doing exactly what it's meant to do right but the movie clips aren't playing that's normal okay. for that to do that right so what we need to do to see that is we need to run it in a test environment okay so command return there we go i think the wheels are spinning in the wrong direction <laughs> yeah they are but we can <laughs> fix that in a second <laughs> that's that's fixable yeah but there we are, right? So it's in reverse. It's reversing. <laughs> oh, it's, yeah, yeah, it's a skill. <laughs> <laughs> it's a skill. Right, okay. So that's playing out like so. Yeah. And you could see that the body was bouncing gent gently along. Uh, if I wanted to make that change, I can do a couple of different things. I can double click on motion wheel just here. I'll go back to that first frame. Okay, and then... I'll change it to uh, counterclockwise, like so. Double click there. Let's test it again. There we are. See? Easy fix. Easy, easy, easy. Right, let's do a quick save on that. Let's get some more uh, content in here. I know I've got seven minutes remaining, but I can work like a fiend when I have to. I'm going to lock both of those layers. I'm going to add a new layer. Here and drag that down to the bottom of the stack. Let me just change my proportions here so I've got more room to work with. Do you know what? We could have a, we could have a, I'm going to think of a thing that we could maybe blend with a bit of film clubness. That's what I'm going to think of. Okay. Yep. And there's one coming up in the not too future. Yes, there is. Yeah. Maybe I could get that in there. Uh, the great yellow sky of insert name of place that has a yellow sky. I mean, I know a place which has a blue sky and a yellow ground. Yeah. Oh, Tim. That's just mean, man. I Yeah, but I do deserve it. I do deserve it. I don't know what was going on on that particular day. I have no clue what was what was happening in my head. <laughs> oh, and of course, anyway. I'm talking about the beach. Yes, you are talking about the beach. Yes, and also the um, the flag of of a very important nation right now. Sorry, no. So, yeah. no idea what you're talking about. Have you not? <laughs> uh, so the gradient transform tool here is doing this job for me. 
There we go. Oh, that's fantastic. It. Yeah, it's, it's good blend. The blending here, by the way, is, is, is superb. Uh, I'm going to create another rectangle. I keep getting the bone tool because by on autopilot, I kind of go ahead and um, and just tap M on my keyboard for uh, for the rectangle tool, and it's R inside of Animate. Oh, okay. So let's go ahead and mess with that fill just here. So I'm going to change this to a green, like so. It's going to be very, very children's TV series uh, styly. This one and my gradient transform tool again. So F is the keyboard shortcut for that. Bringing in the span of the gradient like so. Okay. And then rotating it around like so. Holding down shift just there. And then further changing the blend of that. And just like the other things, you can go ahead and do repeaty, repeaty stuff on it as well, which is kind of exciting. Now, you might be thinking, but why is this car driving on the grass? Well, it actually isn't. Thank you for asking. Yeah. It's just driving on tarmac now. There you go. Huh. <laughs> so, quick save. Of course I was thinking that. that. That was like overly aggressive, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Going to add another layer. How am I doing? Four minutes. Tone, you can do it. Warm. Right, this layer is going to start off. In fact, these are going to be the best trees I have drawn ever in my life. Well, that's or a the best to start off with. It is. It's um, it's uh, it's one of those trees. It's a good one. <laughs> Favorite concrete trees. Concrete tree. The concrete tree of uh, of Ainsbury Hardwick. -da -da. But I, I could mean, make I it. Be more concerned that we can see straight through the car behind the wheels. But, you know. Yeah, I'm not worried about that at the moment. Okay. No, no, no. I'm cool with that, Tim. Right. You know what I'm like, man. It's just you know, it's all happening. There we are. Now I can branch out. My... Finally. Oh no. Making it happen. Let's just correct that. For just a moment, there. I was just thinking, what is he doing? But then I remembered, oh yeah, we can just modify the corners and everything. There you go. You <laughs> That's see? an odd looking tree. <laughs> then, yeah, okay, fine. Yep. Fair it's enough. still an odd looking tree, but it's got, pers <laughs> it's got a lot of personality. <laughs> It's a boomerang tree. Boomerang tree. It's that well-known flavour of uh, of arboreal culture. Yeah, from, I hope. Uh, I hope Flynn isn't watching anymore. From the land of Lower Tononia. <laughs> Why? That's a Tononian accent. I, of course. It totally is. Uh -huh. That's that's how Tononians speak. Yep, sure they do. They do. Just refuse to acknowledge the crazyism of the Tony Armour. Just <laughs> agree with everything he says. No. <laughs> yes, no, no, no. you're right. <laughs> All I'm going to do here is uh, I'm just going to move this into, uh, into place over here just for a second. And then just, just a shade too big, really. And because the car is a symbol, we don't need to be concerned with... No, and it's on its own layer. So, uh, you know, it's all good. All right, okay, okay. Alles See, I'm starting to get it. You are. Slowly, but surely. Yeah, it's all good. Doing the good stuffs. Right, okay. So, uh, I need to make sure that my brush is bigger than it currently is. And I'm basically just going to go like that. There you go. Just another bit of that poking out. Super good. I'm then going to get my paint bucket, K, which is the same as the live paint bucket. Another massive clue. Uh, in Illustrator. Is there, oh, man, you know what mode I had it in, don't you? Draw behind. I had it in draw behind. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, so I thought you were being sassy for a moment. I'm going to get my tool bucket, K. Okay. <laughs> K. <laughs> Real, okay. right now i'm in now i'm in uh do this thing normal but actually it's paid off because look i've got some nice sort of shading behind uh, it's going on that why is that still doing that uh, uh always confirm 
that the brush is acting the way it should be doing in the first place. But anyway, moving on. If it doesn't work this time, there you go. Perfect. Right. That's good. Nice. That will do for that. However, right, I need to make this work in a slightly different way. So I am going to uh, grab everything on this layer. I'm going to take it right out over here. And I'm going to have a sort of a tracking um, rectangle just for the minute that's good and long like that. doesn't need to be anywhere near that deep. It is just for me to use here. That's great. And then I can select all of that. Now I can group that. Okay, makes sense to do that, all right? And then I can go ahead and move that into into position. Why aren't you connecting? Okay, I'll try that, and then we'll come back. There we go. Now this is this is not terribly elaborate, so it's kind of easy to work with here, like so. So now I've got both of those things. I'm going to turn them into a symbol. Da da da. Oof. Land. Uh, I know I'm at time now. I'm so sorry, but I'll oh, get okay. there. We have a couple of minutes just to finish that. That's okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, of course. what I'm Always. going to do. Cool. Thank you. Okay. So, I'm going to create a, a classic tween just here. So, I'm just going to put a keyframe in at that end and make sure I'm there. I'm going to turn on onion skinning. Right, and then I'm going to move this like so. I'm going to eyeball it so it's not quite, not quite in the right place. Now I haven't got the the motion trajectory uh, uh, interval uh, exactly the way I want it to be, but I think that will do just fine. And let's test that out. So if we right click and create classic tween because we've got those things there. To turn onion skinning off because that's where it gets a bit crazy. Let's try that out. I, it's going the wrong way, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> I, I could fix that, but do you know what? I'm not going to. It is going the wrong way, but it's an yeah. inception car driving forward. It is an inception car. Oh man, do I do I change it right now? I guess I could. I'm going to just change it at this end. There we go like that that means i have to go to the other end and change that to about there i think this is where it can get you right let's try that oh yeah that's it that, that should work so i'm going to test that now i think it's moving up slightly but it might be yeah and there's a slight jump because it's not not completely aligned but but there you go. You get the idea, right? Super that we're cool. just a little bit of tweaking around. And of course, you could. I think you could remove the guide rectangle at any point, and then you probably oh, wouldn't could. even oh. notice the uh, moving. Okay. True. Well, actually, the the whole purpose of me doing that <clears throat> is to actually bring that down onto another layer, so it's concealed by the stuff in front of it. And the, uh, the thing with the car, with that car body, if I wanted to. I could go into that particular symbol. Yeah. Or I could if I'd unlocked the layer that I was working on. Let me yeah. lock the other one. Now, if I double click on that, I could quite easily go ahead and get my paintbrush here and in paint behind mode. So I need to go to the tool setting just here, have uh, paint behind. Just confirm that that is on this time. Okay. Get my brush, get a suitable color to work with with the brush and then just paint away like that I don't need to be that careful because it will just be resolved to the shape that I need anyway more or less uh, if I want to clean that part up I don't think I need to because if I come out of here there you go but if I did want to clean that up, that would just be a clean-up operation. Let's just test it one more time. Come on, return, take shit of that. And there you go. There we go. Wonderful. That's... I know it's a simple thing, right? But it's a start for if you've never never done Hang anything on. before. What happened to the trees? I think they're behind the sky, aren't they? I turned that layer off. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. 
really yeah. cool. All right, I think... Oh, actually, they are. Yeah, they are. My apologies. Yeah, <laughs> I should move the sky backwards. They are. There you go. Now they're back. Okay, let's split it one more time. There we are. And with that, I think we are at the end of our stream today. We are! First of all, thank you, Tony, for explaining everything we need to know to get started in Animate. I almost, said the, I almost said the other word. Yeah. <laughs> How many times did I say it? Uh, I actually had a counter and it just says three times. Three times, 300 pounds. Right, okay. That's more than I make in a month. All right. Uh, I know people at the paymaster's office. And they're saying TNT. Yeah, there we are. Yes. Get it. Um, and, yeah, I get it. Uh, next week, uh, just let me pull up the schedule so I can <laughs> let you know what is going on in Adobe Live Land next week. First of all, of course, off. Don't forget, we will be live yeah. on Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. But also, next week, we'll have some uh, 3D scene setting up with David Glissman. And this will be happening in Dimension, aka Stager. And on another stream, we will have a sports-themed uh, illustration with Rachel Katzala. So do make sure to join us next week as well. Just so you know, there will be a day off on Monday because of a bank holiday where we work. But maybe I will still uh, do a stream on my personal channel. Who knows if I have the time, Ooh. then we could have some fun. I would definitely let you know. But for now, thank you very much for watching. We will see you in the Discord. If you haven't joined that one, check out the link below the video. There's a link to the Discord. And um, any last words, Tony, before we uh, stop the stream? No, it's been great having you here. Go ahead, play with anime. It's a lot of fun. You can have a lot of fun playing it. With it. Is. Yeah. All right, then have a wonderful rest of your week, and we'll see you soon here on Adobe Live. Bye. Bye. Thank you.